Hello everyone. I am Ned LeBeau. I am Professor of International Political Theory at King's College London in the War Studies Department. I am also by fellow of Pembroke College University of Cambridge and the James O. Friedman Presidential Professor Emeritus of Government at Dartmouth College in the United States. I'm very happy to be able to share with you my reflections on international relations theory. I will be doing this in the course of 20 to 30 videos, uh, each on average 18 to 20 minutes, uh, each of them addressing initially a core question of epistemology. By epistemology, I refer to knowledge. Uh, what kind of knowledge do we seek? How do we go about finding it? And how do we know or claim that we have it? You will see that uh, different perspectives and theories in international relations, and indeed in other subjects as well, make uh, quite differing sorts of claims. Uh, they seek different kinds of knowledge. They seek them sometimes in similar ways, but very often in quite different ways. And they tend to disagree about how one makes truth claims, how you assert you have some degree of knowledge. I focus on these issues because they are an important way of understanding the international relations theory project, but more importantly, they teach us something about how science and social science go about doing their business. They will provide you with the kinds of conceptual tools, insights, frameworks, ways for thinking about these problems that will let you assess the claims of various theories and paradigms. I will refer, in the course of these chats, to paradigms and theories, but I don't organize my presentation around them. Most textbooks do. They go through realism, constructivism, feminism, liberalism, Marxism, and so on. Uh, and or they structure their inquiry around particular substantive issues that are uh, on the agenda at the moment. I'm doing something different. As I noted, I'm fun uh, focusing on epistemological questions. Uh, they offer a, a deeper take on how we think about theory, uh, but more fundamentally about knowledge uh, more generally. Now, I don't consider what I will be doing uh, as lectures. Uh, rather, they're chats. There are more informal interactions uh, in which I can speak to you, not certainly one-to-one, -one, but um, I can pretend that that's what I'm doing. Uh, my model for this, which is one reason I'm sitting by my fireplace here, is President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, my childhood president and hero, who was a master of using radio to reach the American public uh, beginning in response to the great banking crisis of 1933. Vast numbers of Americans listened to Roosevelt and did so uh, not only because they were concerned with what was going on, but because he was able to speak to them directly, put his pleas or arguments in the kind of language that people would understand, 
And in doing so, uh, he bypassed the media and gained direct influence. Uh, I'm not trying to influence you. you. You will see that I very clearly have uh, my own take on international relations theory. It would be impossible not to. I've been in this game, <laughs> well, I've been a professor now. I'm in my 54th year as a professor, so I've been doing this for quite a while. But I intend to offer you uh, a conversation about the major perspectives uh, in theory to offer, as far as I can, an unbiased presentation of their positions and to critique them. I will also be equally fierce in critiquing perspectives that I happen to think make more sense uh, than others. Uh, my goal is to make it possible for you to make your decisions. The two principal perspectives that will uh, organize uh, this set of talks and really that will run through uh, them in international relations theory are what we call positivism and interpretivism. Positivism developed in the 19th century and then by the Vienna Circle in the first part of the 20th century, uh, treats social science as a science and believes more or less that the kinds of methods used to acquire knowledge in a field like physics can apply to the study of the social world. The second perspective, called interpretivism, also goes back to the 19th century and uh, I suppose receives its fullest interpretation in the early 20th century by the great German sociologist Max Weber. Interpretivism argues that the social world is very different than the physical world, that the kind of knowledge we seek is different, that we acquire it differently and even use it for different purposes. I will elaborate these two different positions uh, at some length in the opening talks and then use them as the framework for my analysis of <coughs> international relations theories. Before going really any further, um, I think it's important that uh, I offer some thoughts about why uh, the study of theory is important uh, and particularly an epistemological understanding of theory. I noted a few minutes ago that I think it offers you uh, uh, the most important perspective to assess the project of international relations theory. Uh, however, this is uh, not a position that everyone would subscribe to. So I regularly give lectures in the master's level, war studies, introduction to international relations theory. I traditionally have given four talks that focus on what is knowledge, how do we acquire it, and also on questions of causation and reason and what is their relationship to acquiring knowledge. <coughs> we now have, and it's a good thing, uh, younger people, faculty members, who take part in this course and they represent quite different intellectual perspectives. Feminism, post-colonialism, post-structuralism. Um, in their view, uh, epistemology is suspect. It somehow uh, is a discourse that sustains the power structure and narrows rather than broadens your perspective on the world by upholding a particular understanding of theory. 
I reject this kind of criticism outright. The way I understand epistemology and how I'm going to try to explain it to you. It's my cat. <laughs> how I'm going to explain it to you is that epistemological questions are central to any kind of knowledge claim and that if we're going to engage in any project of theory or indeed if we're going to reject the project of theory um, as some postmodernists do, we are making our own epistemological claims. So we should be very clear about what those claims are, why they're made, and why we think they're defensible. Uh, so even if uh, you subscribe to one of these uh, alternative perspectives, I do believe that I have something to say uh, to you in my conversation. Well, I look forward to seeing you all, I hope, in subsequent talks. Thank you very much.